And yeah, finally tonight in the future of everything, I don't know about you, but I spent the weekend refreshing for updates on our, our favorite interstellar visitor, that comet or question mark 3i Atlas. Uh, it is up to a little bit more strangeness. Now, last week, we told you that 3i Atlas was getting way brighter, way bluer as it got close to the sun. Well, now there is a new report from NASA that shows that 3i Atlas might be picking up a little speed in, quote, non-gravitational acceleration. But what does that mean? Well, basically, it means it's being propelled by some other force besides gravity. Maybe it's thrust from burning off of chemical compounds as it got near the sun, which happens... Uh, Occasionally, it would be natural for comets to usually burn off uh, some of those chemicals, and that's what you see in that big cloud afterwards. And we would see a very big cloud around it once we get a very good visual soon, but we haven't yet. In the meantime, the hype is in overdrive, with headlines jumping straight to conclusions. Alien ship uses engine? I mean, we're not there yet. Um, but before we jump to any of those conclusions, let's go straight to the source on everything interstellar travel. That is Harvard's professor Avi Lowe, back again to help us break some of this down. Uh, professor, always great to see you. So you're hinting at a little bit of this the last time we talked. Now, non-gravitational acceleration. Like, how much acceleration are we talking here? Well, thanks for having me. It was uh, data from the ALMA observatory, which is a millimeter wave uh, uh, set of uh, sensors that uh, presumably detected the 3 atlas as it approached uh, perihelion, closest approach to the sun. And uh, what uh, it discovered is a deviation by four arc seconds in right ascension from the expected path. And that's very significant, statistically significant. Uh, I calculated, given the level of acceleration that they inferred that was reported uh, on the Jet Propulsion Lab uh, website for 3i Atlas, uh, is uh, that corresponds to uh, evaporation of about a sixth of the mass of the object to give hmm. it that kind of a boost uh, as a result of recoil. It's a very significant uh, uh, fraction of the mass of the object. Uh, and uh, I calculated it based on momentum conservation. Uh, the material flowing in uh, away from the object in one direction gives it a kick in the opposite direction. There is no mm -hmm. way out of that. And uh, under relatively conservative uh, assumptions about the escape speed of the uh, molecules or dust particles from the object, one gets that a substantial fraction of the mass of the object had to be evaporated. So that means that if it's a comet, a natural comet, it should be surrounded by a cloud of gas that carries uh, 5 billion tons or more. And hmm. the object itself was losing a significant fraction of its mass. So, so that means when we look at the uh, 3A Atlas after it goes out of uh, hiding behind the sun, uh, and that should happen within a week or two. Uh, if it's a natural comet, we should really see a very bright, massive cloud of gas, uh, and perhaps even a cometary tail that is extremely bright uh, around it. If we don't see that, the question is what propelled it? Uh, and uh, there is no way out. One way or another, we should figure out the nature of the object. If it evaporated, if 20% or so of the mass of the object got evaporated by sunlight, then we will know its nature because that's a substantial portion of the mass that the object was made of to start with. And we can uh, figure out what uh, composition that material has. Uh, it's 20% is such a, a large number, and yet, Ah, you know, it makes me think of the last time we saw something like this, a muamua, which you studied so closely. Uh, we didn't see that type of, of cloud around it. That was another interstellar visitor. What else could be going on here? So in the case of a muamua, it occurred to me that it could be the sunlight reflecting, bouncing off its surface that could push it. And in fact, uh, three years later, there was actually another object discovered by the same telescope in Hawaii. It was given the name 2020 SO, discovered in September 2020. And uh, that one ended up uh, being recognized as a rocket booster from a launch in uh, 1966 by NASA because uh, we were able to infer the composition of, uh, of, of the surface 
surface of this object, which was stainless steel, uh, using an infrared uh, spectrograph. So it was clear that one was artificial. It was pushed by reflecting sunlight because it was hollow. And so that led me to suggest that maybe Oumuamua was also artificial. In this case, we do uh, detect gas around it, even when uh, uh, we, we found it, even when it was far from the sun. The question is, uh, is there much more gas now? Uh, and uh, it's uh, possible because it got brighter. Uh, if we don't see that uh, very massive amount of mass uh, of gas around it, then uh, you know, the, there might be something else propelling it. You know, a, a spacecraft obviously can, in principle, have an engine that uh, will not produce such a massive cloud of gas. Yeah, or, or like you said, I mean, even a, a, a large stainless steel or stainless uh, nickel, uh, you, you know, shape that is being pushed by this, all of it is, is wild. And yet, the most frustrating part, when are we going to see images? What's the latest with your quest to try to get some of the images released that NASA already has that may not be public because of the government shutdown? And when are we going to see land-based, like Earth-based uh, observations? Because I know that's right around the corner, right? Right. The, the high-rise camera on board the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter uh, took images of uh, three atlas when it came closest to Mars. That was uh, the third, the second and the third of October, uh, more than a month ago. And I tried to reach out to the principal investigator of that uh, camera. I didn't get a response. And I corresponded with uh, Representative Anna Paulina Luna, who uh, brilliantly decided to send uh, a letter to um, the uh, acting administrator of NASA. Sean Duffy. Uh, she sent it on uh, October 31st. We haven't heard mm -hmm. back from him. However, he immediately responded to a tweet from Kim Kardashian, who asked, uh, what is uh, uh, the tea about 3i Atlas? And he responded mm -hmm. to her. And my uh, complaint is that uh, in terms of priorities, he should respond uh, quicker to a letter from Congress or uh, to a scientist uh, who really wants to analyze that data. And unfortunately, we didn't hear back. So as of now, the claim is that this is a result of government shutdown. I think it's inappropriate to withhold the scientific information from the community because uh, we are planning future observations based on what we know about 3 Atlas. No, we, we will continue to push for answers. Hopefully, Kim Kardashian will continue to push for answers, and, and hopefully uh, you'll get your answers sometime soon. Professor Avi Loeb, thank you so very much. We thank you for watching, and remember, stay updated on breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or watch live on our YouTube channel.